Hey guys, we have a couple of topics for you. We will provide an update to the V-band light curve of Tabistar using David Lane's latest measurement, which shows solid evidence of the continued progression of the long-term dimming trend. And we will show indications of a structured and symmetrical geometry that arises from the light curve, which indicates this phenomenon may not arise from any known natural origins. So the last time we updated you on January 28th, this was the V-band centered 25-day simple moving average of the long-term light curve of Tabby Star. And as a further reminder, there are three distinct components that make up this light curve. First, there is an accelerating long-term dimming light curve component that is shown here with a best fit curve over the span of time from December 6th of 2015 to October 10th of 2017, where it dimmed by approximately 3.54% to its lowest level of 11.8555. Secondly, there was an abrupt knee in the curve, you know, a sharp angle, which became a temporary brightening curve that brightened linearly by approximately 1% over a period of 71 days, which is represented by this best fit linear segment. And thirdly, that was followed by a very similar but exactly opposite angled abrupt knee in the curve that turned back down into another dimming trend, which went back to its exact previous and lowest flux level that it was at prior to the brightening event. This is represented by this best fit linear segment, but it is to be seen if this will have an accelerating trend to it. But for now, we are modeling it as a linear downward sloping and dimming trend until we have more data. So for our continuing updates, we have received little additional data due to the prolonged bad weather in Nova Scotia. And that is why we did not post an update last week. But we now have additional data to share with you to provide an update indicator as to where the long-term light curve seems to be going from here. So let's zoom in on the last 181 days of this light curve, which is highlighted by the red box, and go ahead and add our new data point which was provided by David Lane. So this is the portion of the light curve of what it looked like on January 28th, and this is what it looks like by adding the new and lower data point, which was taken on February 6th. And this is the best fit curve for this portion of the light curve. Notice that the centered 25-day simple moving average is now at a new all-time low over the entire time period since we've been keeping track of the long-term light curve, Tabby Star. And the dimming curve is continuing and maintaining its steep downward trend and seems to be in concert with the slope of the accelerating long-term dimming curve just prior to the brightening event. The current dimming rate is calculated at 0.323% per month at the present date. Two weeks ago, we calculated 0.308% per month. So we may be picking up some acceleration there. So let's go ahead and zoom back out with this new data point incorporated so you can see the entire light curve. And we will now take a closer look at what happened over the last 263 days. So let's go ahead and add in the best fit curve for the entire time period of this light curve. And let's now zoom in to this portion of the light curve and look at some interesting observations. First, we decided to measure the angle of the first knee in the curve that started the temporary brightening event. So let's call that angle theta as indicated by this symbol. We then measured the angle of the knee in the curve that started the recovering dimming event that followed afterwards. What we found was that these two angles of the best fit curve segments were essentially identical. They were only off from each other by one degree from our measurements. So we can say with high confidence that these two angles are, for all practical purposes, identical and can both be represented by the symbol theta. And so it flows from that and also supports an earlier observation made in our past video that originated from one of our subscribers that the slope of the recovering dimming part of the light curve is essentially identical to the instantaneous slope of the accelerating long-term dimming curve just before the brightening event began. So if we draw two horizontal lines, one intersecting the lowest point of the accelerating long-term dimming portion of the light curve, 
and another horizontal line intersecting the highest point achieved during the temporary brightening event, we have a perfect, a perfect parallelogram. Therefore, it follows that the two angles phi are equal to each other and the two angles omega are also equal to each other. And further, the lengths of both of the opposite sides of the parallelogram are equal as well. So the fact that we have this structured geometry from some random light curve, especially considering that some believe that this is just random dust, makes us consider that the cause of this may not be of known natural origins. There is a lot more to this phenomenon than what we would conclude from just using spectroscopy to draw a conclusion. We have so many indicators that cannot be easily dismissed as natural. For example, we have a constant and strong bias of a long-term dimming trend, which we believe may be accelerating. We just need more data to confirm the acceleration exponent. This star keeps dimming, guys, and we believe that it's getting dimmer and dimmer faster and faster. Guys, a light blocking material continues to aggregate around the star and it is not being blown out by the constant radiometric pressure from photon flux bombardments as dust would be. Whatever the material is, it is driving the long-term dimming trend of Tabby star and perhaps accelerating it. Also, another example, what would cause nice, abrupt, and sharply angled turning points in the light curve feeding into very linear curves? And what would cause the abrupt change of the light curve from the brightening event and then back into the long-term dimming to have the exact same angled measurements? Another way to put this is why does the dimming slope just prior to the brightening event have the same dimming slope as it has now after the brightening event. It's just like a switch turned off and then back on after 71 days. How can that possibly have a natural explanation and even more unlikely an explanation of random dust? Dust can't turn on a dime with sharp turns like that or produce nice straight segments. If it's dust, it's dust with a swarm mentality. This is not chaos and randomness, guys. There is a structure and a symmetry and a progression to this phenomenon, which seems to be suspect of a non-natural process. For anyone who is diligently and carefully watching, measuring, recording, and analyzing all of this data, it's becoming very strange and suspicious to us. We have something very big here, guys, but it'll take more time before it becomes obvious to all that this is not a known natural process. So we must have patience and diligence to watch and record the continuation of this phenomenon that has the potential of changing our perspective of where we as humans fit in this universe. This is both a strange and exciting phenomenon. Well, guys, let us end on a positive note. And that note is that Bruce Gary will be back online making new measurements of Tabby Star in the next couple of weeks. We have a lot more data that will begin to flow once again. So that's all we have for you. Take good care of yourselves, and we will see you in our next video update.